It is 10 a.m. in New York City, where former President Donald Trump just walked into a courtroom a short time ago. He'll take the witness stand at his civil fraud trial. He spoke a short time ago, calling the case political warfare. The former president's two eldest sons were on the witness stand last week. New York Attorney General Letitia James also spoke this morning, saying in part, quote, Trump has repeatedly and consistently misrepresented and inflated the value of his assets. We will be monitoring the testimony all morning long for you. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds is expected to endorse Ron DeSantis for president at a campaign event in Des Moines later today. Supporters of the Florida governor say this is a huge win for him. DeSantis is still polling far behind Donald Trump. For more on this, we're joined by CBS News political reporter India Kapsas. Uh, great to see you. So let's talk about the Governor Reynolds endorsement. Um, is it, I mean, is it a little too late for DeSantis? I mean, I know we've got a couple of days, 100 days, in fact until the election, uh, but not as many days until the primary. So what are you hearing? Good morning, Vlad. It's nice to join you all here this morning from Orlando, Florida. And regarding this official endorsement that we're expecting this afternoon from Iowa's governor to DeSantis, it's not too late for the governor. In fact, we are less than 100 days away from the Iowa caucus, but this is actually a positive thing for Governor DeSantis. And when we talk about his support, he's trying to get out of second place, out of being tied to second place with Nikki Haley, according to some of the latest polls. But this is huge for him. And in fact, it's what can gather him more support from Reynolds. Now we know and it's important to know that Reynolds is a Republican governor who has high uh, favorability amongst voters and DeSantis has been one of the only GOP candidates who has remained strong presence in Iowa campaigning with different events such as the one he's going to have this afternoon. So it's not coming in late for him and it's what can actually gather the support for him. Mm -hmm. So you were actually at Florida's Freedom Summit over the weekend. What stood out to you? Well, there were a lot of key and notable moments from the summit. Um, there, it was a convention center full of very enthusiastic Republican voters from Florida, lawmakers and GOP candidates. But there were some notable moments, including, first of all, Donald Trump was the most anticipated speaker at the event. When he stood up on stage, it was a good four to five minutes just uh, cheering, hearing these loud yelling for Donald Trump, people holding up their Trump 2024 signs. They were very enthusiastic about listening to him and, in fact, Many said that they had only attended the summit and they stayed throughout the entire day just to listen to former President Donald Trump. And he was well received and welcomed by the audience. Now, he spent uh, a good amount of time focusing on targeting President Biden and other GOP candidates. But what was the complete opposite was for Chris Christie. You know, Chris Christie, the moment he stood up on stage, he was booed at and the booing continued mm. practically for the entire uh, length of his speech for about 15 minutes. And he was practically booed booth off the stage. Now, it's also important to mention that in all of this and in very having very enthusiastic Republican voters from all of this scene, Nikki Haley was missing. She was no longer a speaker at Saturday's event, and we weren't able to get an official word from her team as far as her absence. So we'll be looking out for that in the next couple of hours or weeks ahead of her or days ahead of her presence at the presidential debate. Uh, DeSantis and Trump uh, both targeted each other in their speeches. Uh, and, and I wonder, obviously, Ron DeSantis sees Donald Trump as his white whale. Uh, but Nikki Haley is starting to poll strongly, um, not just in South Carolina, but nationally as well. Uh, does DeSantis worry at all about her? I know she wasn't there, but, I mean, she's yeah. still got to be worried that she could ultimately outperform him. Yes, so you're right that Nikki Haley, first of all, she was absent from the summit, but she was still mentioned by former President Donald Trump and DeSantis, including um, Trump during his speech. He just briefly mentioned her, acknowledging that she is in second place, but she's still very much trailing behind Donald Trump. These were his words. And when it comes to Governor DeSantis, I had the moment to ask him directly in a gaggle that there was for press ahead of his remarks. And I specifically asked him, Governor Ron DeSantis, do you consider Nikki Haley to be a threat to you? You or your campaign, given your increase in recent, uh, your recent increase in criticism, to which he didn't directly answer my question. Instead, he steered the conversation away and said that his criticism during an Iowa rally was were only made because he was asked about Nikki Haley. But there was no yes or 
a no given to me in terms of does Ron DeSantis consider Nikki Haley to be a threat? And of course, I asked this based off of recent polling numbers that we've seen that Nikki Haley comes in second place in key early states such as Iowa, New Hampshire, and even South Carolina. So speaking of recent polling, a new CBS News polling shows President Biden losing to Trump in a hypothetical matchup with a margin that we've seen grow over the past couple of months. What's behind this? Well, you know, we're a year up until the elections for 2024, and there are numerous factors behind this. But we know that primarily there are issues of importance to Americans. And let's take the economy, for example. This is very much important to everyone throughout the past two years with inflation high in our nation. You know, wallets have been strained. So when we talk about the economic factor behind this poll, a lot of Americans are saying that they think that if Trump was president in 2024, they would be much better off financially. And this goes as far as black and Hispanic voters thinking they're going to be much worse off financially speaking if Biden continues to be our president. So, you know, we've seen throughout the past two years and especially during 2022 when inflation was at its maximum point, we were seeing increases in prices for even the most human basic needs such as food and even gas prices. So, of course, Americans are going to be worried about their wallets, their resources, and they're just looking for a change. And this is directly reflecting in the polls that we saw from the CBS poll this Sunday. All right, Nadia, thank you very much. Thanks, Nadia.